Welcome to Midday on this Tuesday afternoon. Our first guest joining us, Tracy Moffat from Tracy Moffat and Associates Royal LePage. Thanks for being here. You're welcome. It was pretty hard coming in with uh, the weather being so I nice. I know, though. I know. It's like you we know? should take midday outside. Yeah. <laughs> Just out in the parking <laughs> lot or nice. something. <laughs> we did. I think Susan, uh, I was there with Susan one time when the uh, Briar maybe was oh, here. Oh, yeah. We did it at um, the Coliseum. Oh, yeah. Fun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, will have Could be a new thing, maybe. That's right. Yeah. For the summer and spring months. Yes. Not in the winter at all. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so Tracy, we're talking about moving. First of all, is this a time of year you think that people are really starting to sell their houses and starting to move? You know, yes. spring when the weather gets nicer? Definitely. People actually think the spring market, the spring market actually starts in February. Oh, okay. Believe it or not. So we're kind of right in the thick of things right now. Um, the topic that we're talking about today is moving with kids and pets and stuff because people that are making a move with kids, considering school changes and mm -hmm. stuff like that, are actually thinking about doing that right now. Right. So if you have a house on the market that you think is great for families with kids that want to mm -hmm. be near a school, now's the time to put it on the market because parents with kids and stuff are thinking about it actually now and not in June and July. Right, yeah, they want to get in early before the next school year. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Okay. So I thought I'd uh, bring some tips on, uh, on how to make it a smooth transition for yourself and for your kids and for your fur babies too. Yeah, okay, so we have have, uh, the title page maybe we can put that up there so everybody knows what we're talking about moving with kids and our first picture that we have I think is to do with toddlers isn't it yes yeah so moving oh with toddlers gosh, and I that. know right <laughs> so kids under the age of six is probably the easiest to move with yeah. um, you know you want to talk to them kind of um, at their level explaining how to move or you know um, how to move so maybe you want to do that with toys or mm -hmm. with books um, but definitely toddlers are kind of the easiest um, to move with you know it might not be easy for your energy because I know <laughs> that's why I was laughing at that picture because that little girl's just tearing all the boxes off and it's I'm like, sure lots of people can attest yep. to packing a box and then the toddler coming along and Taking unpacking it and stuff so but just you know kids are very um, they want things that are familiar and they want routine so if you can keep that going as long as possible mm -hmm. and try and explaining things to them like what's happening um, and just because you're packing their toys doesn't mean that the toys are going away, um, right. you know, good for one. good. So, yeah, because it can be very stressful mm -hmm. on them, too. So trying to talk to them at their level and keeping routine as much as possible. Okay, that's a good one. Good tip for toddlers. School-age kids may be a little bit more difficult. Yeah, little, definitely a little bit um, more difficult. There's definitely two schools of thought here. Um, some people think it's good to move in the summer when they're out of school, right. and some people think it's good to move during kind of mid uh, mid season. Right. Um, some some parents like having the kids entering the school system, even if it's for the last two weeks, just to get familiar with the school and that sort of thing. So. Again, like I said, people that are moving right now can probably get in for the last couple of weeks of June to get their kids acclimated to the school. Right. Um, some parents just want a clean slate and they'll move in the summer, so they'll push it uh, June, July um, for you know, moving into their new house in um, summer. So school age kids, you want to, if you're going to a new area, a new community, maybe find some activities that they can do where they can meet other kids yeah. make it as fun as possible so again talking with them communicating with them telling them what's happening so they can um, be a part of the decision process mm -hmm. is really important too so if they're looking at houses um, you know asking their opinion and stuff like that makes them feel included as opposed to um, like it being a big shock yeah okay um, teenagers, uh, I would think that this would be the hardest. And also probably a lot of anxiety comes along with this for, yeah, for teens, Yeah, right? definitely for teens, they, you know, they will, some of them will actively rebel <laughs> against yeah. uh, well. moving. The good news is with social media, it makes it um, a little bit easier for them because they can still be in contact right. uh, with their friends and stuff. Because you have to remember, and I remember when I was a teen, my friends, 
they were my world. They're your world. You know, Absolutely. more so than my family. Yeah. You know, I consider yeah. that my family. So if you're in a situation where maybe they can go back for graduation mm -hmm. or they can go back, you know, to visit their friends as often as possible. Um, and again, involving the teens as much as possible is super important. Yeah. So even at the types of houses that they're looking for, give them the opportunity to have an opinion, listen to them. Um, I know myself as a realtor, when I'm showing houses with teens, I will ask the teen for their opinion. Really? As if I would be talking to the adult. Oh, that's just such to a good thing to do. Make them feel, make the process a lot smoother for yeah. them because it yeah. can be very difficult. And uh, so keeping the lines of communication open mm -hmm. with teens is very, very, very important. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and pets. So sometimes the, the the pets don't get um, they get overlooked yes but they shouldn't I know there are little fur babies and they're used to their homes so you know when they're moving they're moving to a new environment as well so it can be very stressful for yeah. pets you know um, it can be as simple as even like packing an overnight bag right um, making sure that you have enough food for the next few days keeping your pet uh, maybe contained to one room and introducing them like kind of a room at a time. Okay. They need... Um, that was loud. I'm not yeah. sure what that was, but <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> that made me jump. Um, you know, a little bit of quiet, a little bit of calm. Also, don't forget to uh, notify your veterinarian mm -hmm. um, of your new address change and that Good sort of point. thing too. You know, sometimes, like you say, the pets get overlooked because you have so much going on that you forget, oh yeah, right, we have to do a change of address yeah. for the pets as well too. So, and again, if they can... If if you can give them to somebody else on the day of the move, keep your cats indoors, you know, for a little bit till they can get acclimated, um, you know, giving them a little extra love too helps. Good tips, Tracy. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. It's funny. Some things that I guess you don't always think about when you're in that sort of busy moment of moving, right? So you're focused. Yeah. You're, you got so many things on the go that you sometimes tend to, you know, forget about mm -hmm. loved ones and pets. You take advantage of that, and and it's just as important because they can make your life easy too, and That's they can right. all go so <laughs> make it miserable. So there you go. You heard it from Tracy. Excellent. Some things to think about. There we go. Tracy's information is at the bottom of the screen. We are back here on Midday in just a minute, so stay with us.